So for today's video, we're going to be going over heating curves. How do we interpret heating curves as far as temperature, phase changes, energy, and all that fun kind of stuff. But before we go on, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can leave me a comment below. You can give me a thumbs up. You can share. Please support my channel step by step science. Before we get to heating curves, I want to just go over a quick review of temperature, energy, and heat. Please remember temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the individual particles in a substance. Basically all it tells you, or not all it tells you, but what it really tells you for our purposes here is just how fast the particles are moving. Oftentimes when we talk about temperature, we talk about hot and cold, but those are kind of subjective. What one person thinks is hot might not really be that hot, and what one person thinks is cold might not really be that cold. But if we have two different substances or two substances in there at different temperatures, 35 degrees Celsius and 15 degrees Celsius, we don't like to use hot and cold. We just like to be able to tell that those differences in temperatures tell us that the particles, the molecules in this substance are moving faster than the molecules in this substance simply because they're at a higher temperature. Temperature is average kinetic energy or how fast the particles are moving. Heat, heat it has the symbol Q. And don't forget, heat is just the flow of energy from an area of high temperature to an area of low temperature. So if you have two objects and they're in contact with each other like that, this one is bigger and 20 degrees Celsius. This one is smaller, but has a higher temperature. Okay, then the heat is going to flow from the area of high temperature to the area of low temperature. So heat, which has the symbol Q, is going to flow from the 50 degree object into the 20 degree object, even though the 20 degree object is bigger. We're talking about heat, and heat flows from areas of high temperature to areas of low temperature. And we can calculate the change in heat, the amount of heat that is flowed as delta Q is equal to the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. Okay, and the last thing before we get to heating curves is inner energy. What we're really talking about is internal energy, and the internal energy is the total energy of all the molecules in a system. Okay, that includes a bunch of different things like the translational kinetic energy, just how fast they're moving around. We can also have the rotational or the vibrational kinetic energy because those things can be turning and vibrating, and we have the potential energy due to the molecular or the intermolecular attractive forces between the molecules or the particles in that substance. Okay, so as we talk about heating curves and energy temperature and heat, please keep those definitions in mind and let's get started with heating curves. Okay, so here we have a heating curve. We have the temperature in degrees Celsius on the y-axis. We have time or heat on the x-axis. Really, over time, we're gonna be adding heat to this object. Okay, and we're gonna interpret this heating curve. Now this is the heating curve for water, but you can use the same ideas for any substance. Okay, the same general idea. So down here, we're gonna start with a solid. And you can see over time, we're adding heat, and over time, as we add heat, the temperature is increasing. And the temperature is increasing because heat is being added, and the temperature of the solid is increasing, and the energy that you're adding is going to be energy of the part is going to be increasing as they vibrate faster. Okay, now as we add energy and the temperature increases because kinetic energy is a measure of the temperature, then the kinetic energy of that substance is going to be increasing. And along this whole line here, it's a solid. Okay, you can have a solid and as you heat the solid up, it gets hotter and hotter and the kinetic energy is increasing as the molecules move faster and faster. But at some point, as you add heat and the temperature increases, then that heating curve is going to flatten off and you're gonna have a horizontal heating curve. And you can should notice here that the temperature is not increasing. Here the temperature is increasing, here the temperature is constant. Well, what's happening to all that heat that we're adding? Because over time, we're still adding heat. Well, that heat is being used to melt that substance. Okay, so during melting, in this case, the solid is changing into a liquid. The heat that is added is being used to break the hydrogen bonds between the molecules. Remember here, we're talking specifically about water, but the energy is being added to break the bonds, to weaken the bonds between the substance. And the internal energy is increasing, but the temperature is not. You can see here the temperature is not increasing. 
Now that means that the kinetic energy is not increasing, but where is the energy going? Well, the energy is going into the potential energy because when we melt it, we have a solid and a liquid together in our container and therefore the potential energy is going up because the temperature is not going up. And if the temperature is not going up, then the kinetic energy is not going up and the heat that's added is increasing the potential energy between those molecules. Now, when does it melt? Well, it melts when we reach the melting point. And you can read the melting point right over here. We know for water, because we're talking about water here, that the melting point is zero degrees Celsius. So you can just take that flat part of the curve on the bottom there and measure right across, and you can see that's zero degrees Celsius. This is for water. For a different substance, you'll have a different melting point. This is the melting point, the temperature at which it melts water zero degrees Celsius. Now, at some point, all the solid is going to be gone and we're going to be left with just a liquid. And as we add more heat over time, then we're going to have just the liquid and the liquid is going to be increasing in temperature. You can see that right here. We have increasing temperature, no increasing temperature. Now we have another increasing temperature as we heat the liquid. You know this when you put like water on the stove to boil water, it increases and during that increasing uh, temperature, heat is being added and the temperature of the liquid is increasing. The energy of the particles is increasing as they move faster and faster. And as they move faster and faster, that tells us that the kinetic energy is increasing, not the potential energy, but in this case, the kinetic energy is increasing. All right, now we're gonna heat that liquid up, heat that liquid up, and at some point, if you think about water, what happens at some point after you heat the liquid up? Well, that's right, it is going to start to vaporize or to boil. Now, I put vaporization here. It's turning from a liquid into a gas. The added heat is used to break the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules to weaken those hydrogen bonds. And therefore, the internal energy is increasing. But once again, you'll notice here the temperature is not. So what kind of energy is it that's increasing when the temperature doesn't increase? That's right. That is the potential energy. And it's the potential energy between the liquid and the gas molecules of that substance as we vaporize it and we turn that liquid into a gas. But once again, this is for water now. When does that liquid water start to vaporize into a gas, which we call steam? Well, that happens at the vaporization point or commonly referred to as the boiling point. And in this case, you can just read right across that flat portion of the graph over to the temperature scale and you get 100 degrees Celsius. Remember for water, it's zero degrees and for uh, uh, melting occurs at zero degrees and boiling occurs at 100 degrees. So this is for the water curve, the water heating curve for a different substance. There'll be a different melting and a different boiling or vaporization point, okay? And the heat is going into changing the liquid into a gas, not raising the temperature. Now, once all the liquid has turned into a gas, we can take that gas and we can continue to add heat and we're gonna raise its temperature. So now we have a gas and we're raising the temperature of the gas and the heat that's being added is raising the temperature of the gas and the energy of the particles increasing as they move faster and faster. Well, once again, the temperature is increasing. Remember, temperature is directly related to kinetic energy. So now it's the kinetic energy that is increasing as we add more and more heat to that gas. Okay, so you should notice for this graph, we have the lines that have a slope and the lines that are horizontal. When they're horizontal, it's a phase change that is occurring. And therefore, the temperature is not increasing. When you have a line that has a slope, then you're taking one single phase solid, liquid, and gas, and you're increasing its temperature and increasing its kinetic energy by adding more and more heat to it. Or when you add more and more heat, you're increasing the motion of the particles you're making them move faster and therefore their kinetic energy is increasing. Okay, so there you go. There is a quick overview of heat, temperature, and energy and how to interpret a heating curve. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. 
You can give me a thumbs up. You can give me a comment. Please leave me a comment. I always want to know how you like the videos. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all your friends and show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.